for 12.54. And Stefa, uh, Anna Stefans on Rapello 16 of Ireland scored 13.54. You'll notice if you've been watching over the past few days that those scores are down on previous day's competition. That's because there are only 30 movements in the final, not 36. From here, what is rapidly becoming the most successful equestrian nation in the Olympic Games. They've already won the team show jumping gold medal, the first medal they've ever won in any Olympic Games in the show jumping yesterday. And Holland also was second, and very, very well deserved second too, silver medalist in the team dressage two days prior to that. Now we have 41-year-old Tina K. Bartel riding Olympic Courage, a dust-bred 15-year-old gelding. What a lovely, active pace. It gives me the feeling, as soon as he comes in the arena, of being a lovely, light, free-moving, free-going horse. He wasn't hugely rewarded doing the Grand Prix. Let's see if doing the Grand Prix Special he can pick up a little more. These Dutch horses have created for themselves such successful teams by the intervention of their Olympic Committee, helping to finance their training and thus preventing them being sold to very tempting offers abroad. And that's why you'll find many of the horses that run in the Dutch teams, be it dressage or eventing, will carry the prefix Olympic. I think all four dressage horses carry the prefix Olympic. As you say, the Netherlands have been incredibly successful here at these games. But we did see Germany dominate this event completely with filling the first four placings. Do you expect those standings to change at all? Is there someone in the field who can come out and cause an upset? I think it's possible that the American horse gifted could get quite near, though I think the general feeling in the camp is that the horse is enormously gifted and that his rider is still not quite experienced enough to get the very best out of him. Now, whether that's true or not, I really don't know, but <laughs> like everything to do with subjectivity, people are very quick to criticise. Um, I think if you throw four miles across country into a competition, people are a little bit, <laughs> a little bit sparser with their criticism, because they know the next minute it could be them on the floor. And just as there's no fear element as such, there's certainly nerves, but there's no fear. Jimmy K has two children. She used to event in 1977. She was in the winning Young Riders team in the European Rural Championships. Quite a lot of these dressage riders start off their career having a bit more fun. And <laughs> I guess they find the aesthetic pleasure and satisfaction of riding a horse to his highest peak, which undoubtedly is the supreme art of dressage. And they decided stick with that. It's very, very hard to specialise in more than one phase of horsemanship and that's where New Zealand's Mark Todd is so exceptional and indeed this year Spain's Luis Cervera, both of whom rode eventing and show jumping at Olympic level. Though I don't think since Hans Winkler in the early 50s, a German rider, has anybody ridden dressage mixed with one or the other. And he rode dressage and eventing. I think in the end he was only reserved for the eventing team. So this looks to be going very well. Timothy Bartels, halfway through the Grand Prix Special. A shorter test in the Grand Prix, hence the marks are going to be lower. Less movement to mark. But in a way, I believe a more spectacular test. A lot of the riders, although it's slightly more difficult, enjoy riding it more. These half passes at a very acute angle, going from one side of the 20 meter arena to the other. With barely much angle on them. This horse sits well down on his hind legs, beautifully engaged, freeing up his shoulders, and allowing him to come out and do this lovely movement, fine change of leg every second stride, but he missed one. He just put in three then. 
the more the aid has been given, the less you can see the rider do, the more tuned and schooled the horse is. The riders aren't allowed to speak to their horses, so how difficult is, is it to, to put those cues through to the horse, through your seat and through your legs and hands? Well, this is the flying change of leg every stride. You can see quite a lot of her age now, the leg and the hands and the weight and the shoulders. There's so many bits of your body that you have to learn have influence on a horse and you have to teach him what those influences mean. And this takes years to get a horse from a four-year-old green horse to this standard can be 10 years of training. It's a very, very, very long road. And I always liken it to driving a jumbo jet or a Concorde, something with an enormous control panel, as opposed to driving a light plane which just got a few buttons and a joystick. I'm used to a few buttons and a joystick. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure what it feels like to have control of all these different facilities on a horse. All I can imagine is this is truly wonderful. It's Tina K. Bartel comes round to her pirouette to the left and out again to medium trot, just one degree less than extended. You've got to be able to show even more than that in your extension. Wrap up collected trot, turn down the centre line to I, which is an imaginary marker between P and V to do passage. Passage up to I, again an imaginary marker between S and R, where 12 to 15 steps of the highest collection we are for regular a little bit short and a little bit irregular as he came back out into passage to halt in front of the three judges of the five the judges from Tire Test. Tidakay Bartels and Olympic courage for the Netherlands.